Have we still got a light on there? We best have. Yes. Sweet. My name is Matt, welcome back to the shop and today I'm talking about honing but before we get into um, cross hatching and, and how horns actually work, the actual tool itself, uh, different cylinder materials and all the rest of it, I want to kind of attack a um, what I hear a lot of people say. Uh, so for those who don't know, honing is a process that has nothing to do with engines. You can hone flat things, you hone lathe tools. It basically means just polishing generally with stones to bring something um, within tolerance or to bring, uh, basically increase the finish. It's all nearly the same as polishing. Honing, you know, honing your skills means, you know, refining basically in a sense. It means basically bringing things within tolerances that you want. Uh, dimensions that you want, you know, sneaking up on it kind of thing. So, um, in cylinders we have what we call cross hatch honing, where you'll see scratches in the cylinder. Now these cross hatches are not set. You can have 45 degrees, you can have 60 degrees, you can have, um, uh, 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 they'll say 120. 120 usually means that it's inclusive. So you have 60 degree there and 60 degree there. That's where they get 120 from. Um, it depends who does it and what they want to do and how they set up the machine and you know how the actual horn is done. However, let's just talk about why the horn is done in the first place. The horn is done because you've just bored it out and the problem with boring stuff out um, with a boring machine or a, a milling machine or even a lathe or something like that is that you are basically cutting a very very fine thread it's a thread as the tool progresses it cuts a thread there is no way ever around that all machining is thread all lathe cutting is threading and all boring is threading the only thing that's not threading are drills um, but you are threading if you have a, a, an automatic feed you are threading that's basically all you are doing and that basically means that when you look at the surface finish under a microscope of a cylinder and the piston you have these almost vertical uh, almost horizontal so if you have your cylinder wall and that's vertical these are almost horizontal uh, lines the degree the angle will be fucking minute you know it'll be in seconds um, it'd be in seconds and minutes not in degrees at all it'd be tiny tiny angles but that's a problem, and that's a problem because our rings run also in the horizontal, and it'll go up and down as it catches, as it goes up. Now it's not really going to catch because these deviations are tiny. So to give you an example, um, these deviations, you know, this this threading in your cylinder will be like this, and your ring will be fucking gigantic like this. It's not that much of a problem. But it will, and it can catch, and all the rest of it. But, the problem I have is what everyone says honing is for. Honing is so that you have a rough cross-hatch pattern that behaves like a file, so it can bed your rings in to your cylinder. That is pretty much trap. It's not really for that. It, it, that's kind of like a side effect. That's not why we did honing. The reason why we did honing is because, like I said, you've got this, this threaded surface, my, you know, tiny, fine threaded surface, but you've got this threaded surface all the way through, which means you have deviations. Which means your cylinder looks like this, where which one, A or B, is your cylinder bore? Which one is your dimension? Well, it's gonna quickly wear out and it's gonna shift. So what you want to do is you want, to, you want to actually wear it out yourself, and that is what a horn is for. A horn basically knocks off all the high peaks 
down till you get a nice honed polished surface then you can take a measurement of that and you can control the size of your cylinder so you know that in six months it is literally not going to be um, 150 microns larger the other reason why we then try and control the cross horn pattern the pattern like this is because if you did a horn and just spun it in a circle then you are going to get steps if you have it like this and you spin your uh, honing tool all the way down your bore at a very very slow speed then you're just gonna you are going to get a horn and you can do it that way but there's also another reason and this is one of the main reasons why we actually do this cross hatch pattern the reason why is oil retention so if you look at this this is us looking at the insides imagine we're sat inside a cylinder we look at the wall this is what we're going to see and then we're going to see some more scratches going the other way so we get this kind of cross horn pattern like this and the reason why it's really there is oil retention and oil run back if you had um, vertical cuts like you would do when you bore it then the oil when you look at the side when you would basically do a cross section um, they're all holes you know they're all scratches inside the cylinder surface like this but with the straight lines when we bored it even if we bored it and we did a really good bore and then we did a really good horn that was a, a radial horn the oil would then sit in here like this and then it'll dribble out and it'll leak down a bit and um, you are going to basically oil your cylinder all good however the oil is going to stay here and that is a bit of a problem when you do uh, for, it's a bit of a problem for burning oil that's the problem emissions and the, you go through your oil quite fast when you have your horn like this if you go a bit further down we are constantly on a slope we're not on a straight like this it's not a radial groove all the way around it's a slope it's a you know it's a whirl it's a, a bloody whirlpool it's a helix going all the way down so our oil will then catch in here run down here but it'll slowly run it can go whichever way it wants least resistance that usual shit you know our oil will make its way back down our cylinder which means that our cylinders won't be over oiled because we do not want that over oiling one of the reasons why you don't want over oiling of a cylinder wall is basically you do not want your rings to glide on oil completely if you do that and your rings aren't basically forced against your cylinder wall you can really quite early on start suffering from ring flutter do a video on that in the future and all sorts of other little problems burning oil being another one of them uh, cylinder sealing you can get a lot of gas blow by if your ring is literally floating on a pool of oil you'll start getting gas blow by or you can do really quite badly when you get up to hot temperatures and all the rest of it and you don't want to start burning oil like it's going out of fashion People have seen file surfaces and you have different angles of your file and the more horizontal the angles on your file the harder it is to ride over each uh, ridge on your file and you do a shallower angle the better finish you get and the finer finish you get and so on. People think this because they've seen a file and they see a horn oh they're very similar they must be the same thing. It's not the same thing. The fact of the matter is is on files uh, the actual teeth on files are actually burrs. When you actually see how files are made it's actually a burr so it's not the same thing as a file people are just put like with a lot of things with engines people put two and two together so when you have a file you whack in like this you whack into the file so you get these burrs that stick out and you have a tool that is a certain shape so it creates more of a burr on one side and a bit of a relief on the other this is how files are made you know it's the actual shape of the tool that gives you your tooth profile one's really steep and one's not so it gives you a cut in one direction and not the other you get a ride over so you get a ride over here and you get a cut there kind of thing no you get a ride over there and you get a cut there because this is basically a bit of a steeper angle that's a shit drawing in it let me do that again but you get the point you know file teeth are like that and then they're, they're angled like this so basically you get a burr like that you get a burr like that and it's this tooth here that's more perpendicular to your direction of travel than this one so you get a ride over and you get a cut that's not what honing is honing actually bites into the metal it basically polishes it flat 
um, just like when you hone other things. So when you do, uh, when people make model engines, they get their piston or a rod that's the right size, a tight fit. They will stick diamond compound on it and they will run it in and out just like a horn. But you are eating into the metal and you are not doing what a file does, which is actually when you make files, you, the surface is struck, which creates a burr. You're actually polishing off all of the deviations and inciting scratches into the surface. These scratches are, what are basically there for oil retention and the angle of these of these scratches is basically all about oil retention. If you have a, a more horizontal angle, a more horizontal angle, then you are going to retain oil for longer. It is going to take longer for the oil to soak down if you have a steeper cut angle. And all this is, you know, very much based on how the engine um, is orientated as well. You know what I mean? Uh, if your engine is sat upright or cylinders in the cat where one's laid down one's sat upright and so on the horn is basically down to how much oil retention they want to keep back in the day a long long time ago one of the things they used to do at rolls royce was to get their cylinder liners and stick them outside for a couple of weeks and let them rust the reason why they used to do that is because the rust the flash rust the surface rust on the inside of the cylinder bores um, basically you know makes pits and cavities and crevices and all the rest of it in the actual surface you know instead of having your freshly machined but under a microscope looks like this nicely threaded they basically have a surface that look like this and they just basically it's just surface rust they clean it off but there's micro pitting and then all these cavities used to hold oil and like I say, rust in a cylinder really isn't the end of the day, as long as it's not really eating into the cylinder surface really badly. Surface rust, surface flashing on the inside of a cylinder is not a bad thing whatsoever. Hope that makes sense. We'll go more into honing the patterns, how they control it, how the machines work and so on. We'll also go into different coatings like Nicosil, like other ceramic coatings, DLCs and the list just goes on and on. Hope that makes sense and I'll see you in a bit.